Karen Gavigan, and I'm interim director of the School of Information Science, and very proud to be the interim director of the School of Information Science. I'm delighted you're here tonight to um, celebrate our award winners who are up at the front. You'll hear from them soon, as well as celebrate the past, present, and future of the iSchool. Before we begin, I'd like to recognize some people who are with us tonight. In your program, you'll see the list of our deans and directors on the left of the inside, inside of your program. So tonight, we're fortunate to have three who are present, Dean Fred Roper, and, and, and I'll have you stand as I call your name, um, Director Dan Barron, and then we've got our current dean and in, in the back right here, who's my boss, um, Tom, Tom Reichert. So we're glad all three of you all are here. Um, thank you, guys. We appreciate it. Thanks for all your service to the high school. Well, and there's also another dean in the room tonight. Um, and will you stand, Dean David Banish? So uh, some of you might have had a, not had a chance to meet him yet. He is the new dean of university libraries, um, and he started in November. So if you hadn't had a chance to meet David, I highly recommend him. I told him his ears must be burnt and his librarians or staff are raving about him. So we're glad you're here. Thanks, David. And also, we're very fortunate tonight, I'm pleased to introduce you to our future iSchool director. Where is Lida? If you'll stand, this is Lida McCartan, and she is um, taking my place. So we're, we're all excited to have her. So she's here for a few days. We're glad it worked out. Also, I want to thank all past and current school faculty and staff to stand up for a round of applause. There are a lot of them in the room, um, some from lots of years back. So past and current, if you'll stand up, any of you faculty and staff who are here, any of former faculty and staff. Thank you. Yeah, big crew here. We're glad they're here. So. Um, one of our emeritus professors, Pat Fian, is here, um, and she in, uh, was a rock star in the children's and YA public library world. Um, we just learned, I just learned, that Pat is leaving Columbia. So she's going back home um, to Michigan to be closer to her family. And I, I just personally am so grateful that she could be here tonight. And I know a lot of you had her as um, professors or you work with her. So just wanted you to be aware of that so you can uh, give her a, a, a goodbye tonight. We'll send her off in style. So we're going to miss you, Pat. Finally, I am so pleased that um, some iSchool friends from our corporate partner, Checkpoint Software Technologies, are here tonight. So if you'll stand when you're called, we've got Aaron Rose and Nick Ziegler, along with Eddie Doyle, who is our keynote speaker. So many thanks to them. So Checkpoint kindly sponsored Eddie's presence here tonight. We're grateful to them for that and the very many things they do for the iSchool. Just to give you some background, Ian O'Brien, he's another Checkpoint executive, he sends his regards. He had a conflict and was unable to be here. But Ian's relationship with Jeff Salter, who's our instructor who teaches our Checkpoint Secure Academy class, and his wife Jody. Um, Jeff and Jody had a relationship with Ian from USC. So Jeff was actually an instructor for um, Ian's class. Jody was his advisor for four years. So when they decided to come into North America to our um, higher ed world, we were the very first in the nation to be contacted about that. And it's because of the relationships they built with Jeff and Jody. I love that story. It's just great. As my mother used to say, always be nice to people. <laughs> so anyway, it's, it's an amazing partnership, very unique, and we're proud of it. So thank you, Checkpoint. So, without further ado, I'm going to turn the podium over to Susan, Dr. Susan Rathbun Grubb, Chapter Advisor for Beta Fund U. Good evening, everyone. Let me turn this down a little bit. Um, first, I want to introduce the President and Vice President of the Beta Omega Chapter of Beta Phi Mu. First, we have Ron Stafford, who is the President. 
Ron is the head librarian at Northeastern Technical College in Shira. Uh, McCabe Brents is the vice president. McCabe is a public services librarian right here at the South Carolina State Library. And Ron is going to begin the initiation for us, so I'll turn it over to him. Good evening. It is an honor to stand before you this evening to introduce the 2023 Beta Phi Mu initiatives. At this time, I would like to ask the initiatives to stand. The initiatives have been declared eligible for membership in Beta Phi Mu by virtue of their superior scholastic record, their character, and their professional promise. They've been recommended by the University of South Carolina Information Science School for their recognition. The initiatives may be seated. We meet here today to honor those who have met the standards of scholarship and their professional school and whose records indicate they will contribute significantly to the development of library and information professions. The obligation of membership in our International Honor Society includes a continual interest in research, scholarship, and leadership. In an information society, we have a right to expect that the most talented professionals demonstrate a willingness to use their talents in service to that society. In accepting membership in Beta Phi Mu, you commit yourself and your talents to the promotion of the best in scholarship and service. Our name, Beta Phi Mu, contains the letters of the Greek words, which can be translated librarians or guardians of knowledge. However, our purpose is indicated by our insignia, the dolphin. However, okay, dolphin and anchor of the Venetian printer, Adolphus Mantis, whose small book of Greek and Latin classics provided the world of his day with greater access to information. Mantis noted that he made, he made a vow to devote his life to public service. The service ideal has never been more important than in our present world. Our motto indicates that service to others is our major commitment. That service can and does assume many forms and occurs in many types of libraries and information agencies. Allied with scholarship, service can extend the boundaries of knowledge and teach information skills. To help citizens cope with the future, we need your leadership now more than ever, not only in creating knowledge, but also in promoting the usefulness of knowledge. As information society requires specially gifted people to provide solutions, not only for the technical, but also the human problems. From you, we expect our future leaders to emerge. In Beta Phi Moon, we look forward to working with you in advance in our common goal. As a light is the ancient symbol of learning, Beta Phi Nu adopted for its initiation ceremonies. Learning must overcome ignorance as light overcomes the darkness. We ask you to accept this symbol of our dedication to the spread of knowledge and understanding throughout the world. For we hold with Thomas Jefferson that no republic can be ignorant and be free. We now ask you to signify acceptance of these ideals by stepping forward as we call your name to receive your membership pin and certificate. Andrea Harmon. Andrea is a librarian at Ridgeview High School in Columbia. She wants to recognize professors Elise Lewis and Valerie Bird Fort for their mentorship and consistent encouragement. Oh, Andrea, can you come back up for a picture? <laughs> not that scary, are okay. we? <laughs> no. Congratulations. Thank you. Randy Dantrell Heath. Randy is the Assistant Library Director at the Orangeburg County Library. He was a USC Augusta Baker Scholar and American Library Association Spectrum Scholar. He wants to recognize Professor Nicole Cook for her work and advisement and notes that his success is because of her and the amazing support system around him. Congratulations. Gabriel Mars. Gabriel would like to recognize Professors Dick Kawuya and Clayton Copeland as most influential during his time at the high school. <laughs> Heather Lynn Richardson. Heather is a media specialist at Williams Middle School in Florence, South Carolina. Her career objective is to collaborate with teachers in meaningful ways that help reach student achievement goals. She would like to recognize Professor Lucy Green as most influential. So the following nominees will be inducted in absentia. 
First is Allison Kraut. Her parents didn't make it tonight, I don't think, did they? Okay. Allison Kraut. She is currently studying at Trinity College in Dublin, Ireland for a master's degree in public history and cultural heritage. She's interning at St. Patrick's Cathedral in Dublin and remotely for the Library of Congress. Laura Carter. Laura is the South Carolina Digital Newspaper Program Project Manager at the University of South Carolina Digital Collections. She's currently a PhD student in Library and Information Science here at the iSchool, and last year she received the William F. Trafton III Outstanding Student Award for Leadership. She shared that she loved the courses taught by Professor Dick Kaluuya. Frances Caroline Krause. Caroline is a librarian at the Greenville County Library System who looks forward to serving and empowering her community through her work as a librarian. She wants to thank Professor Vanessa Kitsey for all she does. She says that her kindness and support for the iSchool students is seen and appreciated. Michelle Grabiak. Michelle is a library media specialist at Berea <coughs> Elementary School in Greenville, South Carolina, and is a two, uh, excuse me, 2022 recipient of the Greenville County's of Greenville County's Public Education Partners micro grant for new educators. <coughs> Sherry V. Neal. Sherry is a school librarian at David T. Howard Middle School in Atlanta. She's an active member in the Georgia Library Media Association and Li American Library Association. She writes articles for School Library Connection and book reviews about books that cover the intersection of the librarianship and, and the law. She also served on the Get Ready, Stay Ready task force to create a toolkit for community members who want to support school librarians facing materials challenges. Melinda Joy Nye. Melinda is the director of title management and scheduling for the INSP television network. Peter Santori. Peter is a library assistant for the Hebron, New Hampshire Public Library. He has a career objective of archival work. Catherine Themke. Catherine is an assistant manager of library services at the Bedford Public Library System in Vinton, Virginia. And finally, Edward Leon Lee Wilson, Jr. Lee is a library technical specialist at the University of South Carolina Upstate. Congratulations to all of the initiates. Excuse me, Dr. R.G. did not mention that several of the initiates wanted to thank her as well. She did not read her own name, but I saw it was there, so thank you, Dr. R.G. <laughs> everyone. Thank you. <laughs> My name is Elise Lewis. I am an instructor in the iSchool and I'm also the faculty principal for the Capstone Scholars Program and tonight I get to do one of my favorite things, recognize our undergrads. So the first individual tonight that we are recognizing is Athena Lighty who is a graduating senior, a Capstone Scholar, and a true student leader. Athena is, tonight is receiving the S.K. Hastings Awards of Service, which recognizes student leaders in our program. Athena didn't start out as an information science major, but immediately understood the power of connecting people and information. You may recognize Athena. She has been all over our social media the last couple of weeks. You see, Athena is graduating in May, but secured a job last semester. And when she told me about this offer, she said, Elise, I didn't even know I could get into that tax bracket. <laughs> she can sell the program or really anything she wants. She is absolutely amazing. She's a leader outside of the classroom as well. She's extremely involved in Greek life, is part of the Multicultural Assistance Peer Program at the university, and is co-founder and current president of our Black Capstone Caucus. She's also on her way to a pageant tonight, so wish her luck on that. <laughs> she has earned graduation with leadership distinctions. She has been in many of my classes, and I'm going to miss you greatly, Athena. I can't wait to see what you do next. So please join me in recognizing Athena Light. undergrad that we get to recognize is our undergraduate scholarship and this goes to a student who exhibits academic excellence. 
Tonight, we get to recognize Evelyn Padilla. Most of us know her as Evie. Evie didn't start out as an information science either. She was in the Intro to Information Science class her first semester. Within the first few weeks of the semester, we went to lunch and she wanted to know all about the opportunities she could take advantage of as a student at the university. A few weeks later, she wanted to know about all the opportunities she could take advantage of as an information science major. By the end of the semester, she had informed me that she was going to be an information science professor. <laughs> <laughs> and she is headed that direction full force. There aren't many undergrads, much less sophomores, who have been part of a keynote at a state conference. Evie has. She has already secured funding to, cut, to conduct research through Mage the Magellan Scholars Program to explore library, ser library services to teens during COVID. She serves as our student representative on the undergrad committee and as our CIC ambassador. Evie is a great advocate for the program. Please join me in congratulating Evie. Dr. Lewis does such an amazing job. <laughs> it's hard to follow her. Um, I do not have anything as beautiful as what she did, but I do have to say that this award is for someone who's just as outstanding as, as Athena and as Evie. Um, this award is the um, Robert B. Williams Research Award, and this is for a, a graduate student who is doing research and who shows potential and it really has a beautiful trajectory in terms of research. And the winner of this award is um, a student who I've worked with, with for two years. She's been my uh, graduate assistant, and um, for two years, uh, she has given me momentum as a researcher by encouraging me, by saying, hey, have you thought about this? And what about this conference over here? And hey, let's do a poster over here. She's the, the best uh, motivator for research that I could imagine working with. And I so much appreciate that. Um, she is a second year doctoral student and um, she is working, this, just this morning we met up to work on, I have a grant that she's keeping me on track with and then she's also saying, hey, let's do this other research paper that uh, you never thought of that I thought of. <laughs> and uh, she's just so much fun to work with. And so uh, the winner of this year's uh, Robert B. Williams Research Award is E1. Um, so this one is uh, the John N. Olsgaard Distinguished Service Award. And we have Jane Olsgaard in the audience, and we would like you to come up if you wouldn't mind for the photographs as well. She's done an amazing job in supporting the iSchool um, for so many years, and so we so appreciate that. So the, th this award goes for someone who's shown outstanding service for the, the School of Information Science. And the winner this year is someone who's been with us for... Uh, I think two years now, and um, and just goes above and beyond. Every time I go into the front office and ask for something, uh, she says, oh yeah, and here, and I'll do this additional thing for you too. Or if I go in and I ask a question, she goes, oh, can I do that for you? She's just absolutely incredible. Um, lightens the load of everybody who walks in the, in the office. And I don't know if I'm her only ladybug or if there are other ladybugs out there, but I absolutely love it. She's so charming. It's so wonderful. It's uh, Gina Holmes. We're so grateful. Good evening. 
I am Valerie Birdfort, an instructor for the iSchool and coordinator of Cocky's Reading Express. I've known Andrea Harmon for several years. Before she was a student in our MLIS program, she was in my undergraduate children's literature course and was one of the best students, often sharing new things with me that I had not uh, been aware of before. During her time in the MLIS program, she worked as a graduate assistant with me at the South Carolina Center for Community Literacy, which is right across the street if you'd ever like to visit. Uh, and I was lucky to have her as a student again in our program. Andrea is positive and eager to learn. She has a passion for children's literature and librarianship. The criteria for the Yenowine Award is based on the quality of student work, student willingness to go the extra mile, and class participation. Whether the class was online or in person, Andrea exceeded in all of these areas. I'm honored to present her with this year's Wayne S. Yenowine Distinguished Student Award. So I get that this isn't the Oscars, um, but this, <laughs> this is an award for two people, so bear with me. This is the William M. Trafton III Outstanding Student Award for Leadership. And this is going to two exceptional doctoral students, so exceptional, they share a last name. <laughs> so I've known Val and Nick Vera since I've started at the university, and to me, they embody the best qualities of our PhD program. So Valerie is an absolute whiz kid, and I can say kid because I've officially confirmed that she's Gen Z, and she teaches me <laughs> terminology like no cap and slappage. Um, she is someone who consistently produces stellar academic work that meets or exceeds expectations for tenured faculty. As an example, she has a first author paper coming out in a journal with an impact factor that is way higher than my wildest dreams when I'm publishing. Um, she's also somebody that professors in other departments have literally said to me, like, oh, she's your advisee? Like, I'm super jealous of you for having Valerie. So just wonderful. And then Nick has worked closely with me um, for years now, and he is like literally my right hand on two very large external grant projects. His project management and research skills, especially in qualitative interviewing, have this person qualitative, do a qualitative interview for you because his interpersonal skills are amazing. Um, they've developed to the point where I completely trust him to administer crucial elements of my project, which like I don't say lightly because you know when you're a PI, trusting a graduate student can sometimes be very hard to do. Um, Valerie and Nick are absolute role models for our students as well. I've seen them informally mentoring our undergraduates about graduate studies in the Davis Lounge, as well as taking out some of our newer PhD students to lunch to talk to them about experiences in the program. They're indispensable members um, to the iSchool, and for this reason, I plan to fail them both so that they can stay here indefinitely. Valerie and Nick, please come up and Except your one. I don't know where your one is. But you can take a picture. Oh, sorry. I, I didn't do my job. Others say. You got it. Probably split one. Oh, okay. Oh boy, everybody spoke such beautiful words. Now it's my turn and I feel a little bit intimidated. Good evening, everybody. My name is Feli Tu Kiefner. I am an associate professor in the iSchool. It's a great honor to introduce Ms. Angela Craig. Well, Ms. Angela Craig has been the executive direct, um, director of the Charleston County Public Library, CCPL, since 
April 2019. So she's still new to <laughs> Angela has said that being a library director is a fulfillment of her long of her dream long ago. Sitting in her first class, in her first class in literaships in libraries as a graduate student at the USC. So, and I, so where she knew that libraries would be her forever career, of course. We don't feel surprised at all. Um, under her leadership, CCPL has been constantly ranked among the top libraries in the US in the Library Journal's Index of Public Library Service. In 2020, CCPL received the five-star rating in, in the Library Journal. The CCPL is the only five-star libraries in South Carolina, North Carolina, Georgia, or Florida. Yeah. <laughs> Ms. Gregg started her professional career with Charlotte Mecklenburg Libraries in 2005. She has worked in almost all departments within public libraries. She has specialized in increasing library access to vulnerable populations and underserved communities. In addition, to her leadership of CCPL. Ms. Craig is currently an AOA counselor at large and the chair of the Public Library Association's Digital Library Literacy Committee. The iSchool proudly present the Outstanding Alumni Award in 20. 23 to Miss Angela Craig. So, ladies and gentlemen, please help us welcome Miss Angela Craig and let's celebrate her accomplishments. Thank you. Good evening. Long ago and far away, I was dean of the, what was then the College of Library and Information Science. <clears throat> I'm pleased to be back. It's a great honor and a real pleasure to be able to present this award. <clears throat> this is award that is given by the school and the college for outstanding leadership. I believe that leadership can be learned. It can even be developed. It can be expanded. But I also believe that the true leader has leadership genes in their DNA. I think you'll all agree that our recipient does indeed have that gene. Karen, would you come up here? school and the college are so grateful to you for your many efforts on our behalf. I'm not talking about just the past two years. I'm talking about the full time that Karen has been at the University of South Carolina. <clears throat> she was a distinguished faculty member, an excellent teacher, 
an inspirational mentor, an innovator, a mover and a shaker, if you will, <laughs> <laughs> and the list goes on. <clears throat> when she retired after 10 years of being on the faculty, <clears throat> I'm sure she anticipated, oops, didn't mean to do that. <laughs> I'm technologically illiterate. <clears throat> I'm sure that when she retired, she anticipated a change of pace. <laughs> Little did you know <clears throat> that you certainly got when you came out of retirement <clears throat> to look after the school. You could have been a caretaker, interim director, but in her inimitable fashion, she chose to be proactive, and went into proactive mode. Uh, examples. She worked with the faculty to develop new programs, new degree programs. She worked on the expansion of existing programs, particularly the BS in information science. Uh, she was a mover and shaker on the Charleston project. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Both of you were. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a project that many people are looking at now. It's been replicated. It will be replicated, I'm sure, all over the country, thanks to the efforts of uh, Karen and Angela. <clears throat> Again, the list could go on of all the things that she has uh, been able to do. So, Karen, thank you. We have this plaque. Thank you. It's Beautiful. If I turned it right side up, <laughs> it says College of Information and Communications, University of South Carolina, 2023, award for outstanding leadership presented to Karen Gavick. Before you say anything, I have one more task to perform. Uh -oh. <laughs> uh, you'll remember that a couple of weeks ago, I asked you for a t-shirt. <laughs> she said there were two left, one small, <laughs> one 2XL. <laughs> That so, is so I immediately special. took it home, and gave it to John, John Upson, and he stretched it on canvas. He enhanced it with an acrylic paints and framed it. And Karen, every time you look at it, hope you'll remember your years at Davis oh, College thank you. and how much you meant to Davis <laughs> and Davis meant to you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone know who knows me knows I'm not usually speechless, but this is incredible. This was not in the script, and I have some people I'll talk to. I had to prove the program and the trophies and everything. And, didn't see this coming, but thank you very much. It has been an absolute honor and a privilege to be back and to see so many of you who for 12 years um, I've had contact with and 
so proud of the awardees tonight, the recipients. So um, thank you. I, I appreciate it very much. And to have it come from Fred is especially meaningful. We go back a long way. So thank you all. Thank you. And now I'm going to turn it over to a fabulous boss and a great leader for the college and the iSchool, Dean Tom Riker. Thank you, Karen. Uh, certainly a fantastic evening and a real privilege uh, to spend a few minutes with you tonight here at the end. Uh, Eddie, always uh, thought-provoking. Thank you. It's the second time I've seen Eddie speak, and I just got to say I'm glad that we're recording this. It's going to be on YouTube tomorrow <laughs> so that uh, I, can, I can go back and catch a few things that I probably missed the first time, but I uh, appreciate that. Thank you so much. I want to thank Checkpoint as well. Uh, for making you available uh, for us tonight. And I've got to say, if you look in your program, uh, there's a little mention about the sponsorship between Checkpoint and the partnership with the iSchool. It is the most authentic and heartfelt description of the relationship and the partnership. We really appreciate working with you. And I know Karen's played a big role in that, as have uh, Jody and Jeff. Thank you all so much for that. Uh, as well. We truly value that partnership. I want to thank the honorees tonight. Congratulations, guys. <laughs> Every, everything that you do, everything that you continue to do just makes us look good and makes the school uh, stronger, and we are very appreciative. I want to thank our friends at the South Carolina State Library for uh, welcoming us tonight, their hospitality, and just making us feel uh, at home. Uh, and I've got to tell you, there's a lot of people. So when a, a lovely evening like this, and especially when it goes seamlessly, that means there's a lot of sweat equity that goes into making it work. And I want to thank our team, Danielle and Laura and Shana, our comms team, and everybody else who played a big role in um, making, making this a wonderful evening as well. Uh, also, our alumni, our students, uh, current and former faculty and staff and deans and directors, uh, Dan and Fred, so glad to have you here tonight. Means uh, means a ton to everybody. Uh, and I'm, I'm kind of reminded of a quote uh, by Rupert Kipling, who said uh, one of my favorite quotes that I discovered in high school, and it's just stayed with me. It says, gardens are not made by singing, oh, how beautiful, and sitting in the shade. Uh, what that means is you've got to get your hands in the soil. You've got to you got to be out in the hot sun doing the good work. You've got to have a growth uh, mindset, right? And I've got to say that uh, talking about someone who's not hesitated to jump right into that garden headfirst is uh, Karen Gavigan. Um, uh, Karen, it's been a true pleasure to work with you uh, over the past two years as interim director. I'll say energy, advocacy, a positivity, a positive attitude, describe her. I'm also going to add one uh, that's specific to me, and that's pickpocket. <laughs> uh, whenever we meet, uh, I always somehow at the end of the movie, at the meeting, whenever she leaves, I've agreed to some request that, uh, <laughs> to fund something, either to fund it or to fund it at a much higher level than I ever would anticipate. And... Uh, it's difficult to say no to her because she uh, she gives you she gives you all the right reasons for why you want to work with Karen. So it's been fantastic. And Karen, I'll say it. I'll just expand a little bit on what uh, Fred had to add. But the milestones in your last two years, uh, the 50th anniversary, you did a fantastic job shepherding that through, and you had a fantastic team uh, with Jack and Fred and so many of you in this room to do that. Uh, but it was under your watch. Uh, the Davis College upgrades, uh, new carpet, and, and so many other things. Uh, pleased to be able to support that as well. The uh, undergraduate program in information science, 14 years old this year. It is the highest enrollment that we've ever had. Uh, very pleased with that, and the trajectory looks very strong. That, too, is a team effort, so thanks, Vanessa. Thanks for everybody who's involved in that. But that, again, is under your watch, and the uh, MLIS uh, is at the, I think, the highest enrollment level. My records that, I'm at, that they allow me to see only go back to 2010. But it has, uh, we had a little bit of a dip, but it is heading in the right direction. I think it's going to continue to grow 
which is uh, counter to the uh, uh, trends across the country. So I think that's part of your leadership as well. Uh, I've also got to say the new cyber degree and the checkpoint part partnership are just few of the indications. And I don't know if it's been mentioned. Did you want me to say something tonight that the Board of Trustees has approved the certificate uh, as well as the new master's degree in information security and cyber leadership and the checkpoint class is a, is a key part of that. So congratulations to that yeah. team, Carrie. <laughs> as Fred said, I could go on and on, but I, I'll leave it at that. But I'll say as interim, uh, you've listened uh, to, your, to your colleagues and your faculty and to the data that have been provided from, uh, from our friends at Kennedy and Company but you also had the courage to lead in a direction that you believed was in the best interest, best long-term interest of your school. Uh, you might have ruffled a feather or two in the process, but as any leader in this room can attest, that comes with the territory when seeking growth and change. So uh, the love you feel tonight uh, is the endorsement that matters. So congratulations again for all of you. So, uh, Lida McCartan, uh, yes, some big shoes to uh, fill here, but uh, we are also confident that uh, your unique strengths and skill set are just uh, ideal for the school at this moment in its rich history. Number one, number two, you're not alone. Uh, this is your team out here. Um, your fellow gardeners, if you want to think of it that way. They'll do everything in their power to see you succeed. So uh, Ida Thompson, uh, Angela, Melanie, Jack, Fred, Dan, uh, Laura, back in the back, uh, Gina, uh, they're going to bring you your gloves, uh, your shovel, your pruners, uh, your seedlings, your mulch, uh, and the watering can whenever you need it. So don't hesitate to reach out to them because everybody wants to see you succeed. And we know you will. So last, um, I believe it's safe to say uh, that I think we all recognize that we're in some turbulent times uh, politically, uh, socially, uh, but also in higher education. Uh, we're not just ripe for disruption. We're really in the midst of it right now. And if we want to survive and, and thrive, we've got to adapt. We've got to be open to change as we forge new paths. Uh, and I consider the partnership with Checkpoint and the new Cyber Grease as an example of that. Uh, we'll always remain true to our roots in librarianship. You have my word on that. But also aligning with growth in, in relevant areas is going to help protect that legacy that was forged 50, 51 years ago. Nobody has the perfect crystal ball, uh, but the one risk we cannot take is to continually look backward at the answer for the path forward. Um, another quote, I think T.S. Eliot said something, it's, uh, uh, it's when we risk reaching too far that we find out how far it's possible to go. And I'm confident that this school has a wealth of additional possibilities as it begins its next half century. So thank you all for joining us tonight. It's been a real pleasure and just, just a wonderful evening. So thank you all. <laughs>